This time of year is pretty hard for me. It's probably hard for some of you guys as well. In fact, I'm sure it's hard for some of you as well because SAD, or Seasonal Affective Disorder, is a real thing that affects quite a few of us on this planet. Especially those of us who live in regions like this where it's cloudy and rainy for almost half the year. Or those of us who live in more northern latitudes where it gets really dark in the winter time. And it might not be the coldest or the wettest or the darkest when October turns into November but it's the hardest time of year for me because I know I'm looking into the darkness and the abyss that is to come. I know there's gonna be months and months of this ahead of me and there's no return from here. I think February used to be my least favorite time of year, but now during that time of year, I have hope that there is light to come and there's spring and rejuvenation. And I actually get excited in that time of year now. There are some things though that we can do to help overcome some of this anxiety and depression that we may feel during the winter months of the year. And as a Seattleite, I think there's no better expert than myself, especially as one who does a lot of work inside with music, to kind of test out and figure out how we can overcome some of these mood-related issues in the wintertime. The forecast for this upcoming week is pretty bad, so what better time than right now to combat sad and to try out some stuff and do some learning with all of you. Well, it's supposed to be raining today, it's supposed to be cloudy, and then the sun peeks out and then it's actually a pretty beautiful day. You never know what to expect here. So I'm trying to combat sad myself and I'm trying to explain it to you guys because I think there's a lot of different things that we can actually do to be proactive in the winter to improve our mental health. And coming from a musician and a music producer, uh, music can be key in this process. I'm actually pretty bad about using music to my advantage though. So both listening to music and making music can be great to improve your mood or to de-stress. I don't know about other music producers, let me know if this is the case for you, but I struggle to listen to music and to enjoy music. I'll listen to music in my studio because I kind of get accustomed to the good sound and I want to actually enjoy music in its fullest fidelity. So I'll warm up my ears, I'll listen before I do my own making of music. But then when I'm just driving around town, I have a hard time of listening to music in my car or say on my headphones before going to bed or any of that. But I think this is something that can be actually really important and it's something that can help our mood. So there's a couple different ways that you can use music to improve your mental health. First, there is just calming and de-stressing. Second, there is energizing and motivating. Now, when it comes to calming down yourself, you know, you should obviously listen to probably more chill music, but one thing that is really great that you can do is actually listen to nature sounds and soundscapes. Uh, there's been studies about this, and you know, the results are definitely a little bit mixed in some of the studies I've read, but calming music can have a great impact on lowering cortisol, which is kind of the stress-inducing hormone in your body and it's just enabling yourself to relax and to be better at your work, more productive, and just better in everything you're doing day to day. Now, the other thing is the energizing and the motivating, and I'm sure you've all been in a car when you're driving down late at night as a teen, listening to music, and it hypes you up. This has the benefit of kind of 
helping us with depression during the winter time. If we can motivate ourselves and get ourselves out of that funk, it's always a good thing. So what I'm gonna try to do and what I recommend some of you try to do, when you're feeling down, just try to listen to some of those energizing, motivating songs um, in the car with your windows down and maybe you'll improve your mood just a little bit. And then the other thing is playing music. So playing music can be very therapeutic and it's good for your brain as a lot of different research shows. But what's really important is that it doesn't matter how good you are, whether you're a professional or whether you're amateur and don't know anything about music playing, you just have to kind of experiment. In fact, even if you don't know an instrument at all, sometimes that's the best way to kind of struggle to maybe get a little bit more depressed for a few minutes, but then to overcome that struggle and to start uh, really working out your brain and building new uh, neural connections and pathways in your brain, which in fact will get you out of some of the winter funk. Okay, now according, to, now according to the research and according to doctors, there's a few main things that we can do to combat SAD in the winter times. First is exercise as we would all expect. So they're not letting us get off easy here. Um, they definitely recommend exercise. And second is light therapy. Now light therapy is something that I've always wanted to try but I've never gotten around to. So I use this video here as kind of an excuse to actually buy this light and what I did is I went on Amazon about a week ago and bought this cheap one here but you could probably get one anywhere and it just has to be 10,000 nits of brightness and 6,500 Kelvin daylight temperature. So you're basically just simulating the summer sunshine um, with one of these lamps and what they recommend is that you use it for about 20 minutes a day in the morning time when you first wake up and so that's what I'm doing today but there's definitely been days this week that I haven't been able to use it in the morning maybe I've woken up later but I've used it in the afternoon and I've definitely used it for a lot longer than 20 minutes at a time sometimes I've used it for 45 minutes or an hour because I'll just work in my studio on some music and I just get kind of, I just kind of enjoy the light being there. You know, the main reason that you're supposed to use it in the morning is just so you can kind of fit with your circadian rhythm. You can get the blue light earlier in the day uh, so you're not kind of affecting your melatonin production later at night. The light will energize you for the rest of the day and kind of wake you up a little bit as well. So what have I noticed doing these two things over the past week? Well, first what I'll say is it's been way too long since I've really been dedicated to exercising. I used to exercise all the time, but then when COVID came around, I kind of used it as an excuse to just fall off the map and stop exercising. So this video here has been kind of a challenge to get me back in the exercising groove, at least something simple, something at home. And yeah, I mean, there's obvious benefits to working out in terms of your mood, but it's kind of different from day to day for myself. So one day I'll wake up and I'll exercise and I'll just start to feel really good and energized, but then maybe that'll dwindle off pretty quickly afterwards. And then there's other days where I'll be exercising and I'll still be drowsy and tired I don't feel too good, I'll be kind of down, 
but then I have a little bit more endurance throughout the day. If I check in with myself later on in the day, I'll notice that I'm feeling better than a normal day. And then there's other days that I exercise and it doesn't really have any benefit at all. It is a little bit hit and miss, but you are basically taking a drug when you exercise, so you are gonna feel better you're gonna get a little bit of that runner's high. Now, in terms of this light, what do I think about it? Well, I actually really think that it is effective. I'm shocked by uh, how much I've enjoyed having it. I thought it was just gonna be kind of a gimmick, and I've actually really appreciated it. So, for a few different reasons. First, it actually has boosted my mood. Um, I think I, I feel a little bit more awake and alert with this light, especially in the morning time. The second thing that's kind of nice is I'll just shine it into my studio, maybe bounce it a little bit off the wall, and it'll light up the whole room, and it'll just feel kind of like a warm summer day, even though it's not. And so I kind of get brought back to that space and that mood. Finally, what I also like to do is use it to light certain areas of the house that might not get much light. So my kitchen, I really struggle with it because the light doesn't turn on for half an hour sometimes. So I'll just pull this thing over and shine it in there and it brightens up the whole space. Or even if I'm filming a video, I might use it to kind of add a little bit extra light in the room or have what's called a hair light, uh, as you can see in the, uh, in the YouTube world or in the film world. Yeah, it's for the price, I definitely actually recommend getting one of these. And I didn't think I would be saying that at the beginning of this. So I think the light therapy actually works. Exercising, yeah, that should work as well. Um, and definitely playing music and listening to music. These are all things I'm gonna keep on trying to do throughout the winter time. And hopefully, like this beautiful sunny day, my mood can improve, even when it's pouring rain and it's cloudy and dark and the sun is setting at 4 p.m. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for some future content and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye-bye.